These are three things that you need to surrender if you would like to get married. And let me tell you, when I surrendered all three things, I got married shortly after. Like, I was engaged and married in less than a year. Welcome back to A Chosen Cover Girl, where we talk about living life full of joy, confidence, and faith, as well as everything in between. I'm your girl, Daniela. And as you guys can see, I got myself a new haircut. Let me know if you guys like it. Let me know in the comments. I went shorter. I'm on this hair journey where I'm growing out and cutting out my relaxer. So I'm excited about that. And I'm really digging this new cut. Oh, and this look is brought to you by a waiver. Like I got one of those waivers, like those crimper waiver machine um, devices, like irons. And I love it. Today's topic is three things that you need to surrender if you want to get married. The first thing you need to surrender is your story. We envision how we're going to meet our husband, how he's going to propose. What is our story going to be? Because we want to be able to tell this romantical story about how we first met our husband. And it's like, if it doesn't fit what we envision, it's almost like, that person can't be it. Like this cannot be the situation. So we get so tied up on the story and how we envision it to be that we miss sometimes the person that's in front of us. We miss what's going on in front of us. No matter how you meet your husband, your story is your story. Even though it doesn't fit how you envision it or how you imagine it to be. And if, if, if it's not this big old romantical story that you want to share with the world, it's still a story. It's just about how you share your story. Even if you met him on the bus, you, and you're probably thinking that there's no sex, there's nothing sexy about the fact that I met my husband on the bus. Okay, cool. You can make that story and spin it however you want to spin it. At the end of the day, it's your story. And that's what makes it special. Not what you envision it to be. Not how you practice it in your head. The way it actually went down. Your story is special. Number two, get rid of the wish list. I don't know about you, but I had a wish list for what I wanted in a spouse before I got married. And it was so detailed, it, the height, what kind of career, you know, I had hoped that my husband would have, um, how he treats me, his interest, like all those things. We have this list of our perfect guy. And we all know that there is no perfect person. You're not perfect. I'm not perfect. So your spouse isn't going to be perfect. Keep in mind, I said, surrender the wish list. Surrender does not mean settle. Just because you're not going to stick to this wish list that you have for your spouse doesn't mean that you're settling. There are absolutely things called non-negotiables. There are things that you must have in a spouse. The way he treats you is a must. Certain qualities is a must. Qualities, characteristics, they're a must in a person that you're going to have as a life partner. But when it comes to 6'4 over 5'10, is that a must? You know, at the end of the day, think about what is it on your list that you can live without? And what is it on the list that you absolutely cannot live without? And then move forward from there. And the third thing that you have to surrender is the person who you think or who you thought your husband was going to be. We get into these relationships or we fall so deeply in love or in like with a particular somebody that we can't imagine that this person is not going to be the one. So when you break up, it's like it takes forever to get over that person because in your mind, it was him. So whether it was him because of the story that went along with it, whether it was him because he was the ideal person and he was everything on your wish list, the other two things that you needed to surrender, or whether it was him because you just love him and you just like him so much that you can't fathom that you guys weren't going to get married. You can't fathom that that person is not your husband. So much so that you re 
refuse to release him. You refuse to surrender the relationship and let it go. When you're holding on so tightly to what you, what was and what could have been and what should have been in your mind, you're not allowing yourself to be open to who it actually is. Which brings me to my bonus point. It's also surrendering to who you think it may not be. When it came to my husband, I didn't think that he was going to be my husband. In fact, I wasn't really that interested in him. So when the Lord told me that he was going to be my husband, I was like, uh, you're wrong. <laughs> and in fact, look at us today. We celebrated 14 years of marriage. It was him all along, but he didn't fit everything on my list. Um, the story that I had in my mind and once again, I didn't think it was going to be him. But when I finally surrendered and said, you know what? I'm just so tired of imagining who it could be. I'm just so tired of hoping and wishing it that it is a particular somebody because I did think at one point that it was. I held on to the idea that my husband was going to be a particular somebody. I would like pray about it and I would ask for signs. And for me, everything would line up and point to that person. I'm like, oh, this is my husband. Because that's who I wanted it to be. That's how much I, I liked this person so much so. In my mind, we were already down the aisle and we had a couple kids and we had a family. And as far as I was concerned, that was my husband. Until it no longer pointed to that person. But I held on to that thought and those feelings for that person for such a long time that if I would have let that go, maybe a little earlier, I would have realized and ushered in my husband a little earlier. Did I delay it? Maybe I did delay it for a little bit. Maybe you are delaying, you know, your spouse and your relationship and your marriage and you're happily ever after because you're so, so tied up into one of the three things that I mentioned. And let me tell you, when I surrendered all three things, when I finally surrendered the last thing and I surrendered who I thought it was going to be and surrendered to the fact that it was who I didn't want it to be necessarily in that moment. I got married shortly after. Like I was engaged and married in less than a year. Engaged and married in less than a year. And today I am happily married. And the same can be for you. So ladies, please don't get so hung up on what the story is going to be. Let God write your love story. Don't get so hung up on the wish list. If God has a man for you, he has your best interest at heart. And he not only has what you want, he has what you need. And come to think about it, I remember going back over my list and I was like, Pat meets like 90% of the things that are on this list. So what was I tripping about? I don't know. And don't get hung up on a person. Move on. Do not tie yourself up to the idea of it has to be this person. When you surrender and say, you know what? However he comes, he comes. However he comes, he comes. Then you have definitely opened the door to usher your husband into hey. your life. I hope this you was helpful. Yourself. And I hope you like, comment, share, and subscribe. And this was a very short video. And goodbye.